Hello, I'm uh, Shel Westra, a PhD student in mechanical engineering here at the Hyperlab. And the uh, main subject of my doctoral thesis is trying to create a proof of concept uh, propellant bladder uh, out of an origami bellows for use in uh, microgravity. Uh, so, one of the main reasons that you'd want to use uh, potentially something like a bladder is because in microgravity, when you're having essentially a half full tank or just even a full tank, uh, the question becomes how are you going to essentially remove your denser liquid from your tank without gravity to pull it towards your outlet? So, there's, there's essentially a couple ways you can try to do this. So, in Microgravity, the dominant force uh, that governs the liquid's behavior without uh, any kind of uh, inputted force on it is surface tension, and that'll actually cause your liquid to potentially wet the walls of your tank. And you could actually try to take advantage of that for inside your tank to actually use surface tension to pull liquid out of your propellant towards the rocket engine. Uh, and that's one method of doing that. Uh, but it has a couple complications to it that don't lend itself easily to uh, some future missions that uh, NASA and the like would want to conduct. Um, when you're dealing with something like a uh, uh, cryogenic propellant uh, in microgravity, it actually has extremely low surface tension. Um, liquid hydrogen and uh, for instance has something like 30 times lower surface tension than more common propellants like RP1. Uh, the other problem you run into actually is that uh, when you're trying to deal with large tanks like an upper stage in microgravity that you would like to restart um, or something like a fuel depot essentially a gas station in space that source propellant long term it, these are large tanks uh, where you will have thousands of gallons uh, contained with them. And uh, surface tension devices have a really hard time uh, achieving the particular exit flow rates you'd want during propellant transfer. So that kind of leads into another method by which you could try to uh, pull propellant out of your tank, which is essentially trying to fill it you're uh, you know, filling essentially a plastic bag with your liquid propellant, putting that inside of your tank, and uh, where you essentially have some kind of gas sheathing the exterior of the uh, bag, and then you essentially just use pneumatics to crumple the bag and squeeze the propellant out towards your tanks. And since it's, such, it's simply just a pneumatic device, uh, you are likely going to be able to achieve a lot higher uh, ex uh, flow rates with uh, something like this in comparison to a surface dimension device. There's also a series of complicated interactions that you generally deal with inside a surface tension device that you can avoid uh, by separating your liquid from your vapor inside your tank. Uh, so the main question then becomes though, well, how are how, how are you going to deal with the fact that plastics have extremely uh, reduced ductility when you get cold? Like, the, you know, the, the typical cliche of someone throwing LN2 on a lock and then taking a hammer to break it is not terribly far from the truth. Um, uh, you could actually use, uh, you can basically freeze an apple with LN2, drop it on the floor and it will shatter. And the same holds true for plastics. When you're crumpling a bag like this, you're actually introducing a lot of elemental folds, like a vertex, that have extremely high stress concentrations. So much so that you could actually just tear your bag apart when trying to crumple it. And so the uh, question becomes like, how do you manage that crumpling? So uh, the method that I kind of thought about was, well, let's try to form your bladder into an origami bellows. So you can fold or um, fabricate your bellows at room temperature. In the case of folding, you can 
get around all these high stress concentrations because you're folding it at room temperature where there's a ton of ductility in a polymer. And then when you actually uh, form it as such, um, the creases here actually act a lot like elastic hinges. And as such, when you compress the, uh, the bellows, it's primarily just going through elastic deformation a lot less high of stresses than you would see when front line of bag. And so because of that, uh, you know, I've actually tested this where you can just watch essentially YouTube videos at home, get some uh, thin plastic films, you know, uh, about three one thousandths of an inch will do, and, you know, just fold it into the shape, and then if you had some LN2 on hand, then you'd be able to simply uh, cycle it hundreds of times and still not necessarily went into any issues of it tearing. Uh, the first bellows I ever fabricated and the first time I've actually ever done origami, uh, I was able to watch a YouTube video and make uh, bellows in a couple hours and I've been able to cycle it hundreds of times in LN2 without any kind of tearing. So uh, clearly it seems that origami bellows are one way of getting around the uh, tearing problem. So you, the next things you have to solve though, it's like, all right, well, we've got around the tearing problem, but the next series of tasks that we need to get around is essentially sealing the seams. You, you, for this particular origami bellows, if this was inside your tank, you'd want to cap off the top of it and then seal along this seam not with metal tape, but something a little bit more permanent and a little less porous. Uh, and so we are currently exploring means uh, of trying to fabricate such a bellows uh, where you could get uh, essentially seal this seam and cap off the top and then essentially put this in one of our cryogenic test apparatuses and actually proceed to cycle uh, LH2 inside of it pressurizing the exterior with helium and then just see what happens and see if see if we're able to see uh, either hydrogen get on one side where it's not supposed to be or helium get on the other side where it's not supposed to be um, and then if you're able to show such a bladder works then you, you essentially show a proof of concept origami bladder and then the next series of questions become well, can we quantify how it actually performs uh, in comparison to a surface tension device. So actually uh, modeling, seeing if you can get the high flow rates that you think it can, as well as uh, trying to understand uh, are there any particular failure modes that we should be worried of, like what happens to this when you uh, pressurize the exterior or interior too much, uh, what happens to the uh, bellows itself, does it deform in such a way that it's no longer usable? And so uh, we're also trying to explore those questions as well with some open source software we found.